welcome to our first aid session today. Um, I'm Farah. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, it's such a strange situation we've been put in. I'm a bit fed up of this. <laughs> not not this. Um, I'm fed up of this whole lockdown thing. But um, I so I hope you're all doing okay. Um, the good thing is by now there is so much out there available for you. So um, I'm so so pleased that. Siobhan from the Positive Bear Company um, invited me down to do this today and I can offer this to you this morning. Um, so welcome. Um, I run Daisy First Aid, Haringey and Walthamstow. Um, so what I do on a day to day is teach first aid classes to local parents and carers. Um, I absolutely love it. So um, Daisy First Aid, we actually have trainers up and down the UK um, running our little businesses and, and teaching these, you know, the skills, the confidence, the techniques that you need to deal with an accident or an injury with your little one. Um, and... I just feel so passionate that it's, it's just so important. And it's not normally one of those things, it's not always one of those things you sort of have on your to-do, is it, um, to learn your first aid when you're expecting baby or when baby comes along. But actually, it really is an essential skill. And it just gives you that, that confidence to approach all of these new and exciting things that babies go to do as they grow up. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased that you've joined me today and hopefully after our session on choking, you'll feel a lot more confident if your um, when baby comes along or if you're approaching weaning as well. Um, our sessions work really well online. So normally our Daisy First Aid sessions, we, we used to run them in people's homes and in local venues. And as you can imagine, since um, the first lockdown, we've all had to sort of move everything online. Um, but the great thing is that actually it like whilst I miss coming to your homes and cuddling babies and all of that, the other online sessions work so, so well. And parents who um, leave the sessions and I feel after I've run the sessions that they tell me they feel so confident um, to use those skills if they ever needed to in a real life situation. So I hope after today you feel confident as well um do check out the links below as well after our session today just to learn a little bit more um what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be doing a snippet of one of our um family first aid sessions that we run for parents the two hour classes and that is what to do if your little one starts to choke on something and i find this is a topic that parents really sort of um, they really worry about and you know it's understandably so um especially like I said if you're approaching that weaning stage or if you've got a baby who gags quite a bit as well if you don't know what it is that can be quite worrying too um so it is something that that parents really worry about so I'm really pleased that I can go through it with you um so before we go into sort of what to do, what I'm going to go through is how to prevent and make sure that your little one is as safe as possible. Now, choking can happen, as we know, at any age. Um, babies can choke children and adults. But there are certain things that make babies um, just a bit more at risk of choking. And one of those things is that they haven't yet learned how to breathe, chew and swallow in the right order. So when your little one starts on solids, for example, and they're first, they're having that first introduction to, you know, purees or mashes or um, like lumps or finger foods, whatever it might be. They haven't yet learned how to manage these functions in the order. And that makes them a little bit more likely to choke. Um, also, babies are curious. Um, they, they explore and they explore a lot of the time by putting things in their mouth. So um, what's this? <laughs> I'm going to put it in my mouth. And that often puts them in, in a difficult situation and that can cause choking as well. 
So, and they don't know what's hazardous, what's not, what they should and shouldn't be doing. And as much as we um, make sure that we keep an eye on our babies 24 seven, you can't physically have your eyes on your baby 24 seven. So that's why it's really important to make sure that we've done everything we can to make our homes as safe as possible for baby, um, take away any sort of potential hazards and, um, make sure that when we are weaning, for example, that we're making that as safe as possible as well. Um, so before we go into the foods and the preparation of the foods and how to prevent in the weaning stage, it's not only food that little ones will put into their mouth. Um, sometimes they put objects into their mouth. So what you can do when you are before baby is on the move is go around your home and do what we call um, the house crawl. Um, so particularly around the rooms where little one's going to be toddling around and playing around, what you can do is go around on your hands and knees and see what you can reach and find. Because um, there will be things that, you know, you just wouldn't have noticed um, as an adult walking around. So that'll be things like, what can you find under the sofa? What can you find, you know, in the sofa? What can you find um, on the shelves or anywhere that that little one can reach in the cupboards and the drawers even that they could pull open? Are there any choking hazards in there that they can reach? Um, and that's just really useful activity. If you have older, if the baby has older siblings, so it's the, if this is your second or third child, um, it's likely that if your older child is over the age of three, three years, the toys that are designed for that age group are most likely hazardous to a baby. The reason why toys are labeled unsuitable for ages zero to three much of the time it's because they have um, small parts and things that babies can choke on. Um, whereas an older child will know not to put those things in their mouth, um, but still should be supervised just in case they um, get any ideas. Um, younger children and babies and infants, they don't have um, that skill. They don't know that they shouldn't do that. So there might be things like little Legos. Um, I've got two boys, I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and my four-year-old knows that his little Legos only come out when his brother's napping, and we pack it all away and we put it away in a place where little one can't see and can't reach. Um, so think about the toys that your older child has. Um, are there any choking hazards there? Where can you keep them that is away from baby and out of sight as well so that they're not trying to get to where they're not... Um, succeeding when you're when you're not there and when you're not watching them as well okay so toys and um, also being aware of things like handbags if you've got bags lying around the house or um if you have guests when we're allowed guests um do they have things in their bags again babies are curious and and they might go into the handbag and see what's in there as well so um having a think all the time being aware of of what they might be able to explore and reach and find. Now, whenever we talk about choking, um, it's a lot of the time the first thing that comes to your mind is, is feeding and eating. Um, and even babies, um, this is even a risk of babies when before they start solids actually on um, when they're drinking milk and, and bottles as well. Um, unfortunately, there isn't anything that is completely choke risk free. So that's why it's really important um, that we're always with our babies, um, not only when they are eating solids, but also um, when they are on milk as well, when they're having their milk. Now, there's one thing that I have seen, um, I've seen people do, um, and that is that they bottle prop. So what they'll do is um, say babies, a baby has their milk from a bottle. What, what they'll do is they'll sort of prop baby with the milk in their bottle, sit them somewhere really comfortably. So yeah, maybe they're a bit upright. But then rather than parent holding the bottle, what they'll do is they'll sort of lean baby back <clears throat> and put like a cushion or blanket or something there to prop the bottle up like that. So baby can drink without someone holding that bottle. Now, I really want to warn you that this is actually a really dangerous thing to do um, because 
if that baby starts to choke on that milk so for example they take too much or, or they're not swallowing it correctly and again they haven't learned how to breathe swallow to the right order if they start to choke or they're having any trouble with that milk they don't have the motor skills or the strength to move it out of the way um, and babies have I mean this this has been really hazardous for babies in the past um, so please, please don't bottle prop. Make sure if baby is bottle feeding that you are physically holding the bottle and you can take it away whenever baby needs it. Um, and that's the safest thing to do. Um, now, when you start on solids, it's such an exciting time. It's both exciting and scary and nervous and messy. Um, I've done it twice. I know all the mess. <laughs> Um, and there are lots of ways that you might decide to do it. You might decide to start on purees. You might decide to start on, um, on a, like I mentioned before, like mash, mashing the food and giving them um, some texture. Or you might decide to start on um, baby led or, or some sort of combination as well. Um, and like I said, it's really important that you're always staying with your little one. Um, now purees, normally they can manage purees when, when babies start weaning, you know, they don't normally have their teeth yet or anything like that. If you're giving little one um, sort of hard fruits and vegetables or finger foods, um, generally when you're preparing them, uh, if you are giving finger foods, it's a really good idea to go long and thin. Um, so cutting them into strips or things that baby can sort of hold in their hand in their fist like that and it sort of sticks out the top and that's really as, as perfect for baby to sort of grab um, with their fist and they can bring it to their mouth okay now what we really want to avoid is sort of hard chunks or chunks of food that a little one can sort of bite off and that can block their airway okay so this will be just as an example i mean this this is, is no exhaustive but just as an example of things like carrot and um, an apple, that kind of thing. If you're giving your little one um, hard fruits and vegetables, what I want you to do is just gently steam it first so it softens the fruit and vegetable. And then you can, you can mash it with a fork and, and let them explore with their hands or, or with a spoon, um, or you can give it as a finger food. And just as a guide, what we can do is you can sort of mash it, try and mash it between your fingers and your thumb. If you can mash it between your fingers and your thumb, then that's an indication that baby should be able to manage it with their gums. But again, we're just watching really carefully to make sure that they're not um, biting off really hard chunks. OK, so making sure that you're steaming anything um, that is hard and again, cutting it appropriately for little one as well. Now, <clears throat> like I said, nothing is completely choke risk free, but there are certain things that pose a greater risk than others. And that will be things typically that are small and round, like the size of a penny piece or um, anything that especially has a sort of a hard skin that will make it difficult for baby to sort of bite onto with their gums and, um, and crush and manage. So examples of that would be, and, and I'm sure you've, you've probably heard this before, but grapes, whole grapes are a huge culprit for choking in young children. Um, and the reason is because they are round, they are perfect size blocking in airway, they have that tough skin, they are slippery. So if you're giving your little one grapes or anything um, like that as well, like um, big blueberries or even cherry tomatoes, anything like that, but particularly grapes, you're going to cut them in half lengthways. Um, so from top to bottom, as opposed to horizontally where you have that circle. So cut them in half or even cut them in quarters lengthways and keep a close eye on your little one when they are eating. Because if they're anything like my um, my youngest, for example, even if you do prepare food that is, that is sort of small and safe for them, if they're more interested in getting the food down to their belly than they are with chewing and with managing their portions and things that they put in their mouth, they will put too much food in their mouth. So um, again, just keeping a close eye, even if you have prepared it um, safely as possible, you're keeping a close eye when they are watching that they're not putting too much in their mouth. So like I said, you're going to also cut um, other round foods like uh, cherry tomatoes and like the big blueberries as well. If you're giving little one uh, sausages, for example. Um, again, sausages, 
we're going to avoid cutting them and slicing them into rounds, okay? Um, there have been cases where little ones have choked on those. So if you're preparing sausage for your little one, we are going to cut them into strips um, or you can cut them into semicircles. Okay, so that's how we're going to prepare them. Um, nuts. So if we are giving little one nuts, we are going to avoid giving them whole nuts. A little one can choke on a peanut. So um, avoid giving them whole. What you can do is you can ground them and give it to them ground in their food. Or more commonly, we'll give it to them in a butter. So um, like peanut butter is an example. Now, if you're giving little one peanut butter, what we need to do is to avoid giving it to them on a lump on a spoon, okay? Um, because again, that is round and that is sticky um, and that could cause a problem if they swallow that too. Um, so avoid giving them um, on a spoon, but what you can do is you can spread it on maybe thin slices of toast or bread. Uh, maybe you can use it as a, as a dip. Be careful that they're not taking too much on there, um, but spreading it is probably the safest way to give it to your little one. So um, peanut butters. Uh, and there are, th I mean, I could go on forever, guys. I could go on for, for ages about, about food preparation and all the different types of food and, and how to, um, and how to prepare it for your little one, but we are just going to make sure we're following those basic principles, avoiding round objects, round foods, um, avoiding ch hard chunks and keeping the hard, really hard stuff to later. And there are certain things that you should avoid altogether giving to your little ones, and a lot of them are common sensical. So um, we're going to avoid giving little ones small sweets and especially like hard boiled sweets and that kind of thing. Um, even small, uh, like chocolate eggs, we're going to avoid giving those ones. So eventually, you know, in a few months time, we're going to get to Easter time and we're going to have, um, you know, loads of chocolates and chocolate eggs lying around and, and um, on the table. So being aware that this one isn't reaching those, those chocolate eggs as well. Um, avoiding popcorn, avoiding, again, that small and round, and avoiding um, uh, marshmallows. Um, so marshmallows, again, um, they can block the airway and they're sticky and they can expand as well. So um, just avoiding giving little ones those. Um, so when you are, when we're weaning and we're giving this one food, I know I've said it, I'll say it again, make sure you're staying with this one. Not only stay with them, <clears throat> like in the same room, but what I also want you to do is make sure you are watching them and you are staying within arm's reach, okay? And the different, and the reason why I say that is because there is a difference, your baby can do two different things and there's a difference between those two things. There's gagging and there's chewing, and it's um, gagging, chewing, gagging and choking, sorry. And it's really important for us to know the difference between gagging and choking. Now, <clears throat> your baby has a heightened gagging reflex. So that means that maybe it might be um, on a certain foods that they put in their mouth, it might be their bottle, it might be toys, like teething toys, it might even be their fist or their hand. Babies um, are more likely to to sort of cough and um, they'll go red in the face, they'll splutter, they'll make really funny faces, um, really funny noises. Um, this is a, like I said, it's a reflex and it's there to prevent them from choking, okay? So it's really, really normal for your baby to gag on food or their hand or anything like that. That is completely normal and it's safe and it's there to prevent them from choking. So if you are um, giving your little one something to eat and they start coughing, sputtering and going red in the face, um, the fact that they are making noise and they are red, not blue, tells you that um, there is air that is going up and down their airway, they're able to breathe and they are managing, eventually they manage this food or object, okay, most of the time. So I don't actually want you to do too much if your little one starts to gag. I know it's really tempting to start whacking them on the back, start sticking fingers in mouths, but actually, as soon as we stick our finger in our baby's mouth, then we try to sort of scoop or anything like that. 
you do risk making the situation worse and causing them to choke because they are already bringing it forward. Normally what they'll do is they'll gag, they'll bring it forward, they'll spit it out. Again, if they're anything like my my youngest, they'll put it back in their mouth and try and chew it again. So um, they, they will gag, okay? Uh, if the food is right at the front of uh, their mouth, so if it's literally right there, then absolutely you can put it out and that will help them to manage it. Maybe they've, they've taken too big a bite or whatever it might be. So... Um, be it toast or pancake or whatever it might be, you can pull it out, okay? But I don't want you to start doing that or sticking fingers in mouths. Um, making sure that baby is sitting upright when they're eating as well um, just helps them to manage um, that, that gagging as well. And, and if they do have any difficulty with anything that they are eating. So high chairs are great for that. Just making sure that they're sitting still and they're sitting upright, okay? Now choking, um, choking is actually where the food or the object that little one has put in their mouth is actually blocking the airway. So no air or very little air is actually able to pass through, okay? So they're not able to make any noise and signal to you that they are actually choking. So what you might find for a baby who is choky is that they might be sort of looking into space, they might have a blank expression or they might have a panicked look on their face. You can't see them sort of bringing that food to their mouth anymore, that breathing motion. And you might see them start to go blue, maybe around the lips where they're not getting the oxygen that they need. So if they're silent and they're blue, that's when they do need you, that's when they need your help, okay? So that's why I say it's really important to make sure you're watching your little one, because if they do start to choke, there's no way that they can signal to you that that is the case. And you need to be um, have your eyes on them for, to, to notice that. OK, not that it definitely will happen, um, but it's really important to be aware of it and to um, to know what to do if anything was to happen and if this was to happen. OK. So what do we do? I've got to help you um, to help demo this. I've got this little guy here, okay? This is Bert. Bert is, um, an, an, I mean, if you've got any better names, feel free to contact me, but this is Bert. Um, Bert is a baby, okay? So Bert is from newborn up to age one, okay? So this is a treatment for newborn up to age one. So if Bert was um, silent and blue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out of his high chair and I'm going to support him. Um, like I said, if the food was right there, then absolutely I'll pull it out. If not, I'm going to support him down and across my lap like this, okay? So I'm going to make sure I'm supporting Bert's body. I'm going to make sure I'm supporting Bert's head. So um, not his neck, but I'm going to have my fingers and my thumb on either side of his jaw and I'm going to hold him head down using my lap for support. The reason I'm holding him head down is because I want gravity on my side, okay? I wanna get the object out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver five firm back blows between his shoulder blades, okay? The top of his back, I'm gonna use sort of the heel on the flat of my hand, and I'm gonna deliver five firm back blows. With each blow, I'm trying to um, get some vibrations going, I'm gonna try and dislodge that object, okay? And I'm just gonna look to see if anything's changed, if anything's sort of fallen out onto the floor. So five of these, so one, two, three, four, five, okay? five firm back rows. I know it sounds firm and it is firm and it won't be a force that you're used to or comfortable using on baby, but in this situation, we just need to get that food or object out. That is our priority. Anything else, any bruising or redness, we'll do with that afterwards, okay? Let's just get it out, get my baby breathing again. So I was just checking to see if anything's come out. You wanna do up to five of those. If the food object is still not dislodged, what I'm gonna do is turn baby around, have a quick look, has anything changed? Has it, you know, can I put it out now? If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold baby um, facing up this time. Again, legs up, head down for gravity on my side. And again, I'm supporting baby's body. I'm supporting the back of baby's head and I'm using my lap for support, okay? I want you to get two fingers and we're going to place them about a finger's breadth below a baby's nipple line. So you can see baby's nipple line there. My fingers are going to be about finger's breadth below on the lower end of their breastbone. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on the bottom part of that breastbone and I'm going to push sharply inwards and upwards to try and push the air to dislodge that object, okay? Two fingers up to five chest thrusts. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Again, see if anything's changed. If not, turn baby around. One, two, three, four, five. Turn baby around. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to just alternate between those back blows and those chest thrusts, back blows and chest thrusts until the object is dislodged. If the back blows and chest thrusts have not yet been effective, so if after between sort of one and three rounds, it still hasn't come out, um, what we're going to do is we are going to call for an ambulance. So we're going to dial 999 either ourselves or we're going to have a bystander, a relative, we're going to get them to call for us. Please don't stop your treatment to phone. Um, we are going to continue with our treatment whilst um, having them on our speaker or ideally having someone else on the phone. And then from then on, you are going to follow the advice of the operator, depending on how the situation progresses. But hopefully, um, A, you don't need to do this at all, but B, the object is dislodged. And those back blows are really effective and often they are enough to dislodge that object. And that is what you are going to do. So thank you so much for watching um, our trading demo. I really hope that that was helpful to you. Um, like I said, that is a, um, a snippet or a taste of one of our DAISY first aid sessions. So in a DAISY session, the trainer will go through um, choking as I have done, but also they can help you to have a practice at home. Um, you can use dolls, teddies, whatever you've got, and just making sure that your technique um, is correct and that you are able to do it correctly. Um, so uh, we also cover lots of other topics, um, you know, seizures, meningitis, CPR, recovery positions, lots and lots and lots of things. So if you wanted to know more about this and how to do it, if you wanted to know about the other topics and if you wanted to know first aid for um, children as well um, then do get in contact with your local Daisy first aid trainer we've got the links below for you to have a look at I've also popped down my social media so um, follow me for um, first aid tips and advice and um, safety tips as well um, and also just support your local businesses, guys. So, so many of these baby businesses and um, baby child, baby um, activity providers, I know we're in we're locked down, we can't go out and do the things that we normally would. But right now, there is just so much out there available for you and so much support and so many opportunities to access um expertise from experts um, including from the positive birth company um, so have a look support your local businesses and your local first aid trainers as well um, take care of yourself seek support if you need it um, and have a wonderful rest of your day thank you so much for watching bye bye everyone